I am the geeky scientist that you see in front of you. I have, I have a spreadsheet that goes back to 2014 and I was tracking my migraines. I used to get four or five migraines a year and I was trying to figure out what was causing them so that I could get rid of them. If you've never had a migraine, great, don't try. And if you've had them, like you just know what a miserable, miserable experience they are. So I was trying to figure out what was causing them and, and, and how to stop them. Uh, I started taking this product in 2018. I didn't get a single migraine in 2018. So I went from four to five a year to zero in 2018. Are you curious about discovering ways of making your life better? Then welcome to my podcast. I'm Bob Nickman, and this is The Exploding Human. Listen in while I talk with all kinds of people in the fields of personal growth, health and healing, alternative therapies, psychology, spirituality, environment, and the future. I'm looking for those answers that make life better for everyone. You'll meet cutting edge practitioners, doctors, artists, filmmakers, business people, and those who have overcome challenges. The brave, the curious, anyone who's out there helping us humans to explore, expand, and explode. Hey, welcome to The Exploding Human. My name is Bob Nickman. My guest today is Chris Burris. Chris is a scientist and we are going to be talking about the world's first nano antioxidant. But first, let me invite you to visit my website, theexplodinghuman.com. Over there you can listen to episodes, read synopses, see photos of my guest, a little bio on myself. And there's a donate button if you'd like to support the show through Patreon. Thank you very much. There's also a YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, where you can listen to episodes and The Exploding Human Facebook page. As I said, my guest today is Chris Burris. He is a scientist. He's also been involved in mechanical engineering, comedy, oil and gas explosives, and uh, competitive soccer. So Chris's company, SES Research, has developed a product called My Vital C. When Chris realized a Nobel Prize winning chemical tested by NASA had been proven to almost double the lifespan of mammals, he decided to make ESS-60, which is the chemical, into a household item. He's now on a mission to help people live longer, healthier, and pain-free. Chris's company has also developed a really cool skincare product with ESS-60. And I'm going to let him explain what this nano-antioxidant is all about. So this is Chris Burris. Good morning, Chris. It's so great to meet you. Thanks for uh, being on the show and reaching out to uh, to do it. Uh, Bob, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm glad that I was able to get you enough information to get you excited about sharing that information with your audience. And, and now, now I'm here. I'm, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I am. Um, you know, I was looking at some of your material, which I have right here. And I told you before the podcast, you look like your picture. <laughs> but um, this product that let's start with the product. My vital C is is there's a 60 in the center of the C. My vital C 60. Let's talk about what that is and why you created it. I mean, it's I, I read the story, but the audience doesn't know about this yet. Yeah. No. This is exciting stuff. Yeah, this is cutting edge, exciting. It's new. Um, most people haven't heard about it. Uh, that's because I'm working on doing my job better so that more people have heard about it, right? Like that's that's what my role in the company now, which is a very different role than when we started. So let's kind of roll back. The the my vital C, the the main ingredient uh, is is a molecule that we call ESS60. Um, that molecule was discovered in 1985. And so I, I don't know if you show any video, but if you do, I'm holding it up. If you're just listening, think about a soccer ball where the lines on the soccer ball represent the bonds between the carbon atoms. So you have a spherical molecule of 60 carbon atoms. Uh, that molecule was discovered in 1985 at Rice University here in Houston. That's where we're based. And, and the three scientists who discovered the molecule and published the original publication in Nature um, 
they went on to win the Nobel Prize for the discovery. So 1985, they discover the molecule and, and you know, publish the publication in Nature. Uh, in 96, they win the Nobel Prize, a short 11 years from discovery to award of the Nobel Prize. Uh, they were awarded the Nobel Prize because this, this molecule, this soccer ball shaped molecule is absolutely amazing. It, 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 I describe it as performing as well or better than the current best material in every application. So it's better ink, it's better tires, it's better batteries, it's better photocells. It's just better across the board. It's, it's absolutely amazing how it performs. Now, because it's such a, a, a high performance material, um, people believe that we would be it would be ubiquitous that we'd be using it in a lot of uh, manufacturing situations. Um, and they also thought for various reasons that the molecule, that soccer ball shaped molecule uh, might be toxic. So they did a toxicity study and published the results in 2012. And this is where kind of the story, I mean, Nobel Prize, it's already interesting, but this is where it gets really interesting. Uh, in, that, in that study, again, it was supposed to be a toxicity study. They gave rats water, rats olive oil, and then rats olive oil with this ESS-60 molecule. Um, instead of being toxic, the rats that they gave the, the olive oil with the ESS-60 molecule, which is really the My Vital C formula, uh, they lived 90% longer than the control group. Now, that's the single longest longevity experimental result in history. I, sometimes I say in human history, but I don't, I don't know what the other history is. <laughs> <laughs> in, in history, um, it's a 90% extension of life in, in, in peer-reviewed published research. The next best way to live longer is actually called calorie restriction, uh, and it's well documented, and the studies are in multiple animal models. If you restrict your calories by 30%, I call that the starve yourself one-third to death diet, um, you can live 30% longer. But that's only 30%. That's not 90%. And there's no starvation associated with this initial study um, that, that really gave these rats my vital C. So that's, that's kind of the long and short, uh, the reason I started the company. I was at, at the University of Houston uh, pursuing a mechanical engineering degree, and my business partner, Robert, was working at a, at a facility called the Texas Center for Superconductivity, and he was actually separating this molecule, this ESS-60 molecule, from other kind of similar components, and the professor, his professor came in one day and said, hey, this material is selling for $5,000 a gram, which was which is crazy, right? Um, and you guys are a bunch of young kids, you should go start a company. And my business partner, Robert is from an entrepreneurial background. And he was like, Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So off they go uh, is actually he and another friend of his started the company, I got brought in, because in order to manufacture this molecule, and we'll talk about the fact that it's naturally occurring here shortly, but the the, the process of manufacturing it is basically vaporizing two graphite rods and graphite turns out to be one of the hardest materials on the planet to vaporize. So you're actually using local temperatures of the sun to vaporize the tips of two graphite rods. Well, local temperature of the sun, there's a lot of heat. You got to get that heat out of there. My mechanical engineering background and ability to put the drawings together. Um, now we're off and running. The other business partner, he, we're still friends with him, uh, went on to do other things. And and Robert and I have been business partners since, since 1991. Uh, and our focus uh, really from 1991 basically until 2017 was selling uh, research carbon nanomaterials to research institutions around the world. And now we've been kind of thrust unwillingly into the supplement market. When you were talking about the molecule and its uh, strength and what it can do, I, th I was thinking about graphene. And then you went and said it was, it was graphite. So is it similar to the that material in, in its uh, pliability and strength and, and size and all that? Because that, that stuff is so fascinating to me. It is. Yeah, absolutely. So graphene is, um, if you think about what graphite is, graphite is, imagine a ream of paper and each, uh, each layer of paper is a different sheet of graphite. Now, if you take 
one of those sheets of paper. So now you have one sheet of graphite. That's what graphene is. Um, compare that to this soccer ball shape, mm -hmm. right? So you have an understanding at, at, at the core, uh, dimensionally, they are in extremely dissimilar, right? That's like saying, what is the similarity between a balloon and a sheet of paper? Well, mm -hmm. I mean, nothing. <laughs> there Not is much. no similarity. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and in fact, if the balloon were made of paper, then, uh, you know, the similarity would be in this case that they're carbon. Yes, they're entirely made of carbon. But graphene um, has some very amazing properties. It's also come up kind of it's its most recent notoriety uh, is in the kind of conspiracy realm where people are saying, hey, there's graphene in the vaccine. Um, I actually dug into that a little bit. There, the, the, the initial claim that there was graphene in it referenced a paper out of a, an Eastern European uh, country, uh, in particular university there. And that university has come out and said, and that paper can't be found, by the way. And they've even come out and said that paper never existed. So um, it's based on on thin air uh, effectively. So that's that's my understanding. Um, and, and people do try and draw parallels between uh, this ESS 60 molecule and graphene. And, and they're they're I mean, other than the fact that they're made of carbon, they really aren't, okay. aren't the same. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very cool. But like, how do they discover this? Yeah. Like where, so, where is it when they go, Oh, we discovered it. Where, where was it? Is it, is it man-made? Is it, well, you said you're going to talk about how it's naturally occurring. So is, yeah, let's, is, let's talk about both of those. So first, if you take the soot of a candle flame, right? So you got a burning candle. Typically, if you hold a cold steel plate over that candle, you'll collect black soot on that cold steel plate. That black soot will have parts per million or parts per billion of this ESS 60 molecule. So it's absolutely a naturally occurring new, uh, material. We've all been exposed to it in very low quantities. Um, in 1985, they actually have a machine at Rice University, and, and, and the purpose of the machine is to analyze very nanoparticles, basically. So they stuck carbon in this machine. They shone a laser at the carbon. So you get what's called ablation, but vaporization of that carbon. And then you have a puff of inert gas that takes that gas, right, that puff of carbon into a mass spectrometer. And what they noticed was that there was a, a, a predominance of 60 carbon atoms. So what you're looking at in that mass, mass spectrometer is how many, what is the ratio of different weights of the, of the individual uh, molecules that are in there, right? So what they were expecting was graphite sheets. What they ended up seeing is that there was a extreme, an exaggerated peak at carbon 60. And if you think about a graphite sheet, why would a graphite sheet be predominant if it's 60 versus 59 or 61, right? There's, there's no logical reason. If it's a sheet, it should be in the same proportion as 59 to 60, 61. But again, it was an exaggerated peak. So they knew something unique was happening. They started playing. It's, it's an interesting article that was published here way back, way back then, right, uh, in the Houston Chronicle, where the professors are like kind of playing around with six, you know, sticks and carbon, you know, and gum and carbon molecules. And then all of a sudden, the soccer ball shape shows up because there's 60 indices on a soccer ball. Uh, and, and now boom, it drops to the floor and bounces and he's discovered carbon 60, a very, very melodramatic moment. I, I love it. <laughs> um, and, and so that's how they discovered that it existed. That is not how we produce it. It took another, I'm trying to think probably another, um, another two years before Huffman and Kratzmer, two other professors out of Germany, um, you started fi figured out that if you could vaporize graphite in an inner environment, so you've got to have all of the oxygen reduced, or you will not produce fullerenes, and uh, and at a reduced atmosphere, so it's a slight vacuum. That's where you can produce the highest quantities of fullerenic material, and then out of that you can separate uh, again what we call ESS sixty. And then how do you take that molecule and make it into stuff, you know, yeah. that you can use? I mean, obviously there's a supplement that you're involved in, but you're just saying tires and all these other actual products. It, it turns out that um, benzene is 
an incredibly important molecule to our society. And it's, it's basically a six sided uh, carbon ring and it's got hydrogens on the outside and it's, it's responsible really for modern society. If you just kind of look around your office, whatever room you're in, if you're driving in your car, listening to the podcast and think, okay, that's plastic. Its foundation is the benzene ring, take it away. And now you're, you're sitting on the floor in the street. And you know, if you were in your, like you're, you're not driving. Um, and it turns out the chemistry that works on the benzene ring. And obviously we've got a very well evolved organic chemistry that supports the work we do on the benzene ring. Most of that chemistry works on this soccer ball shaped molecule. And so there's a, there's a number of things. So you start incorporating it again into inks and tires and batteries and photocells. Uh, it has uh, this again, kind of picture that soccer ball shape and realize that there are six planes of symmetry through that soccer ball shape. So six different ways that you can uh, create a mirror image of that molecule. What that does, and also there's a lot of carbon-carbon double bonds, the strongest bond known in nature. Uh, what that does is it makes it an incredibly resilient molecule. In fact, you can fire it at 15,000 miles an hour at a plate of steel, and where other molecules will just shred when they hit that plate of steel, this molecule will just compress and then bounce right back. So incredibly resilient. It has the ability to hold six, six different electrons on the exterior of the cage, and that comes into play later as it becomes a supplement and its antioxidant capability. So we're kind of familiar with what are called uh, oxidation or reactive oxygen species in our body. Uh, those are negatively charged and this buckyball can hold six of them per, per buckyball, per ESS-60 molecule. So it's uh, it, it, that's where that kind of sits in. Now, just to throw a little more geeky chemistry in it, uh, you know that you're on a path to win a Nobel Prize when they actually add a symbol to chemistry because of your discovery, right? So this the at symbol prior to the discovery of this molecule did not exist in chemistry. And that's the at symbol we use in our emails. It turns out that this soccer ball shaped molecule, the void in the middle is big enough for any atom on the periodic chart to fit inside of it. And now that's not bonded with it that's physically trapped inside of it not co co covalently bonded or ionically bonded to the exterior it's physically trapped inside of it and so lanthanum at c60 means a lanthanum atom trapped physically inside of the c60 molecule and and that again new symbol in chemistry that opens all sorts of doors because that's it's almost kind of a way to for it is a way to force molecules to stay together that didn't exist before right this is the first discovered closed closed cage molecule and so now you're able to trap stuff in it and and that opens a whole new realm now making uh, uh, the C60 molecules with different atoms inside of it is incredibly hard. Uh, and so we don't, there, there's, there, there's a minimal research going on in, in that area. It's amazing. I did, didn't, you know, I haven't taken a chemistry class in 50 years, but I actually followed a lot of what you were saying. <laughs> You're like ionic uh, bonding. I, that sounds familiar. Covalent yeah, bonding. That, yeah. that certainly well, sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had a little bit of uh, my, my daughter uh, took a lot of biology and science and chemistry classes in college. So that wasn't that long ago. So I was, uh, I used to test her on stuff. So I, I had a little bit of a uh, refresh, a little refresh there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So this product that you are uh, manufacturing, you're manufacturing it and selling it already? Yeah. So um, you think about this study that came out in 2012, uh, about 2013, we started getting phone calls of people saying, hey, how much in a dose? And you're going to have to think about you know, we've got our, we're very happy with our carbon nanomaterial hats on. We're scientists or, you know, focused on the technology that might be born out of this uh, carbon nanomaterial. And, and our first thought was, wait, 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 you're asking how much in a dose. This is that's, this is the same stuff that you put in tires and inks and batteries and photo cells. Um, we're going to go with none. Like the appropriate amount to put in your body is none. Um, That's what and I we was actually, <laughs> we, we, we not put, actually I'm not putting a tire inside me, it, right? Exactly. Like none of yeah. those sound like, Hey, let me scrape off some battery components and, and consume them. Right. None of them sound like things you should 
be consuming. We actually added not for human consumption to our labeling. So from from we started the company in 1991 all the way until mid 2013, there was no reason to have not for human consumption on our labeling. Um, we do add it in the middle of 2013. And, and to be clear, the data, the research was clear that you know, carbon 60 is an industrial material. And, and if it's improperly processed, it's actually harmful. ESS 60 is safe, right? That data was clear. We're just conservative, you know, nanomaterial scientists. We're not comfortable with recommending people consume something that we're selling to research institutions so that they can make, you know, batteries out of it. So uh, mid-2013, we had not for human consumption. And really, you know, we, we continued to get calls. The calls would come in, in, you know, a couple times a week, and people would give us amazing testimonials. You know, they're like, hey, my, my knee pain is gone, and, uh, you know, my, my, um, my fingers are more nimble. And we're, you know, we're kind of like, hey, you, you mean the knee pain of your rat, right? Because it literally says not for human consumption on that bottle. Um, and, and that continued. And, and, you know, we were aware that people were taking this as a supplement. We were giving them the proper guideline, at least what we thought were the proper guidelines, um, conservative guidelines, right? And, and, and eventually, uh, a guy with a big YouTube following, uh, this was in 2017, started talking about all the benefits he was getting by taking the product on a daily basis. And uh, our phone went from ringing, you know, twice a week to 10, like 10 times a day. Um, and in, in that time between when people started calling us and really 2017, I was doing research trying to figure out, is this, is this even a business we want to get in? Is this something that we're comfortable with? It's, 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 it's like the opposite of delivering commercial quantities of carbon nanomaterials. And what I mean is when we would sell to an MIT, they would receive the product. They would give it to a grad student. The grad student would go to an HPLC and make sure that we, we delivered to them what we sold them, right? Like, so there's a, it's an exacting industry. There's very, there's no room for error, right? Cause they need to put these in their experiments. And if we've sold them uh, a material that's inferior, their experiment could just go all wrong. Years of work could go all wrong. And the supplement industry is the opposite of that. Like people don't have an HPLC. They they tend to just trust whatever they're getting, which which makes me nervous, by the way. And we can talk about yeah. how you probably shouldn't use Amazon ratings to determine if it's a supplement <laughs> that's good to put on your body. Like yeah. it, 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 I have a kind of an interesting opinion about that. But so we debated about going in this industry and I actually found an article uh, that said 50% of the supplements. So it's a peer reviewed published research. 50% of the supplements that they tested did not have in them what they said they had in them. Right. And, and so again, coming from this carbon nanomaterial, do we want to get in this industry? And finally, a couple of things happen, right? So the big YouTube guy uh, and our phone starting to ring a lot. And I was kind of, we were thinking about this whole process. And I actually believe that people become supplement guys or gals uh, for really usually two reasons. One of them is they decide that they want to be wealthy and they decide they're going to do it with supplements. And I have no problem with people being wealthy. It's just not how I ended up here. The other is um, more altruistic, right? They have their own health problem or they have the health problem of a loved one. They go out and do research, kind of like you've been on this journey and you're doing research and you decided to start sharing with it. You decided to what I call save the world. So these people solve their own health problem. They decide that they're going to use supplementation and they want to save the world. Hopefully it doesn't surprise you. I'm not against people saving the world. <laughs> I just, it's just not how I ended up here. Mm -hmm. I've been making this molecule, this soccer ball shaped molecule, ESS60, since 1991. They do this crazy, supposed to be toxicity study, published that in 2012. And now I'm kind of thrust in, into the supplement market. Is it in the form of uh, capsules? So we do have, we do actually have capsules and, and I was surprised. So the, the way it typically is it, it, we dissolve as much of this ESS 60 molecule as we can in three different oils to make three different products. It's olive oil, it's avocado oil, and it's MCT oil, all some of the healthiest oils out there. Um, we recommend olive oil for two reasons. 
The first reason is that's where all the research is. We're a science-backed organization. Our pedigree is, you know, scientists and delivering commercial quantities of carbon nanomaterials. Um, so that's where the research is. We re recommend um, olive oil. The next reason we recommend olive oil is actually you can get more ESS60 into olive oil. You can get about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter in olive oil, about 0.6 in avocado oil, and about 0.3 in MCT oil. Um, so it basically we sell, it's an oil, it's a high quality extra virgin olive oil, uh, you know, high polyphenol count, those well-documented to be very healthy for you. Uh, and then you take, uh, about a teaspoon a day. That's the recommended serving. And we ended up getting capsules and we were really just getting, you know, we had a couple customers and it can be easier to travel with capsules versus, you know, a little bottle, bottle of oil to, to get through the TSA took me years to be able to swallow a pill i i don't know what that was it just it scared me like i i don't when i was a kid i go i can't i can't i don't know why i thought that it was totally mental i just couldn't do it yeah um, so let's talk about some of the benefits you were hearing about from these people that were taking this stuff without uh proper vetting let's say yeah, yeah. As, <laughs> it, 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 as they were testing it prior to giving it to their rats <laughs> yeah 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 i mean they just i mean people will there are people that will do that i mean somebody yeah. had somebody had to eat uh, ginseng the first time or yeah poison sumac and die you know who knows and they're biohackers and I, and I affectionately call them wackos because I'm now officially right a biohacker and and fit into that kind of wacky uh, wacky perspective. So um, and, and, and yeah, they're they're initially looking for that longevity. Now, it would be very hard to believe that something that extended your life by 90 percent would not not reveal other health benefits like that's just not intuitive it's the opposite of intuitive you would assume that something that's going to extend your life is going to um have some other benefits and and i like to point out that when we were initially selling this with the not for human consumption it really is it, it's a it's a product that was on the market that really generated the opposite of the placebo effect. I mean, literally said not for human consumption and people were taking it anyway with no idea of what the benefit might be. So the, for that first, uh, really from mid 2013 all the way through to 2017, we didn't have any packaging. We didn't have any labeling. It was like, hey, here, they did that rat study. Here it is. Don't mix it in your kitchen. It's better for us to do it. We got a lab. We're good. And here you go. By the way, don't consume it. <laughs> and then people were coming back with, with really amazing testimonials. So there really was no room for placebo effect in, in the early days. Um, and, and I'm going to talk a little bit about testimonials now. So I like to preface this with a couple of things. One of them is an FDA disclaimer, right? Our product has not been evaluated by the FDA. It is not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. Also, I'm going to share testimonials. And I have a couple of rules that I like to share about testimonials, which is I will only give you a testimonial if I have a direct conversation with somebody and I can back track back to that person. If my business partner has a, a, a great testimonial from somebody I haven't had a conversation with, I won't use that testimonial because I just want that, that chain of command. I'll also start off by sharing kind of my testimonials. And it's important to note, like every person is different. I'm not saying that you will have these reactions. I'm sharing with you what I had and every, every person is different. I think those are very important things to understand. Um, in my case, I played soccer for 25 years. And when I retired from soccer, I had a left knee pain that was with me for about eight years. When I started taking this in, in 2018, and that's when I started taking it on a regular basis, that knee pain went away. Now, I've either ha had other aches and pains come and, go come and go, so it's not some magic elixir, but if that's something very specific that even to this day, I don't have that knee, that upper, and right, right above the patella knee pain. I also have to admit, I am the geeky scientist that you see in front of you. <laughs> I, have, I have a spreadsheet that goes back to 2014, and I was tracking my migraines. I used to get four or five migraines a year, and I was trying to figure out what was causing them so that I could get rid of them. If you've never had a migraine, great, don't try. And if you've had them, like you just know what a miserable, miserable experience they are. So I was trying to figure out what was causing them and, and, and how to stop them. 
Uh, I started taking this product in 2018. I didn't get a single migraine in 2018. So I went from four to five a year to zero in 2018. You couple that with my wife. And, and I always remember my wife gets used to get migraines frequently. Um, I always remember the number nine because the she had a prescription for a medication uh, and they would only give her nine. So any migraine, nine per month, any migraine over nine, she just had to suffer through. Again, miserable experience. Um, it took me a while. You know, sometimes it can be hard to convince your significant other to do something, right? Like, hey, you should try this. No, I don't feel like trying it. I finally got her to try it. And she's down to one or two migraines every other month um, from, from the nine. So it's a pretty, that's a pretty phenomenal result. Again, not saying this is a cure for migraines, not saying that anybody else would even have an experience like that. That's just, that's just been our experience. When you talk about longevity, Obviously, uh, it hasn't been enough years to know if people are going to live longer. How, how do you make a claim of that it's going to increase longevity when it's only been consumed for, what, five years maybe now? Yeah, well, in reality, you can't make that claim. And that's the, the importance of having the FDA disclaimer. Um, and in fact, if uh, the average human lives 90% longer, they'll live to 152 years. Right. And by the way, that's that's the average human. That's not the oldest human. Right. You, there's a bell curve around the average human at 152. And there's a long way to go uh, between now and kind of understanding the, 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 the positive impact. What I'm really excited is we end up being in a unique position in our in our current society right so some things that are happening right now there's a book out there called lifespan by dr david sinclair it's a he's a harvard researcher 25 years of research on on what can we do is there anything we can do to extend life and some pretty phenomenal results out of his lab like um regrowing optic nerves in in mice uh that's something that was absolutely impossible and and they're doing it now and he makes the point and i think it's really really interesting by the, by the way i highly recommend the book a lifespan but he makes the point that we can take some skin cells of yours and we can go you know do some science and create a clone of you create a baby you so it is a fact that on any one of the cells in your body, the, the, the information for making a younger you exists, right? So it's not that much of a stretch to say if we can pull the right levers, because there's levers being pulled. Some of them are, you know, just by whatever toxic exposure you may have experienced. Um, and I certainly think like trauma, we were talking about that before the podcast, would fit into these levers that pull things the wrong way. But with their levers there, the information's there. We just got to figure out what are the levers to pull and we can dramatically extend life. And, and it, it may be the case that this ESS-60 molecule fits in there, right? At least we've got the single longest longevity experiment that uh, result that, that, that has been published, um, you know, kind of under our belt. And so I'm excited to be part of this migration. Now, I'll tell some people the story of these rats living 90% longer. And, and a lot of people, a lot more than I would have anticipated will say, why would I want to live longer? And it's a little bit of a shock for me because I've, I've, for whatever reason, I've just had 125 as my target age forever. Like that's just been my target. And I got to be honest, like I didn't have a picture of 125 being kind of youthful and vibrant. It was just going to be the age that I got to, right? But if you change the question from, you know, would you be interested in living longer to, hey, if you had the same mental capacity that you have today and you have the same physical capacity that you have today, would you then be interested in living longer? Interestingly, some people still say no. And I feel like maybe they need to reevaluate what they do on a daily basis um, and seek out some more passion in their life. Um, but most people at that point understand the difference. Like right now, as a society, we have um, equated uh, getting older and living infirmed. And in that original study, I like to kind of facetiously point out those rats lived 90% longer, the rats given the My Vital C formula. 
there was no notation in the study that the rats, as they're living 90% longer out to 62 months, are walking around with little rat walkers and little rat oxygen tanks, right? Like that, they, they lived healthy rat lives and until they passed. And so uh, I think it's exciting to be at this kind of cutting edge of, of, of a quantum shift in our understanding of aging and, and, and how long we can live and how well we can live long. Yeah. I, Cause I always think, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm of the school. Like if my, what's the quality, if the quality is crappy, I don't want it. You know, yeah. It's, yeah. And I see a lot of that obviously, cause you know, people get old and they get very infirm and you know, they wished, you know, I have a neighbor across the street. She says, I'm tired of living and, but I'm not, messed up enough to die and she's miserable mm. and that's her and some of that's her crappy attitude she's had her whole life but some, some of it is just she doesn't feel good and she does she wants out yeah like being like we've i think most of us experienced maybe uh, i don't know being sick or i had scabies once and that was unbelievably miserable and like if you didn't understand that it was going to rectify itself, right. That you're going to get on a healthy yeah. end of it. Then, yeah, I'd be like, yeah, I'm, I don't know how much longer this is. I'm, I would sustain this if this was how I was going to be the rest of my life. You know, you look at lifespan and Dr. David Sinclair and he is pulling, you know, there's sirtuins in our body. There's epigenomics that, that he's working on manipulating to uh, create more youth. He's got, he's got, elderly mice and it may have been rats but i think it was mice that have uh, that are outrunning their kind of teenage or uh with teenage counterparts right so they get on the treadmill and they just run and run and run and run they actually exceeded the capacity of the treadmill they're like that you know as an engineer when you create things you're like no rat is going to run more than this distance so yeah. i don't need it to i don't need the software to monitor past this distance and the, these older rats that were treated were actually outrunning the distance of the mechanisms that were uh, designed to record how far they'd run. So what are some of the other testimonials that you've, um, people that you've spoken with? I'd love to hear some of this stuff because I think the audience is probably excited. Like, what can I, what can I fix and what yeah. can I make better? Well, again, we're not making Possibly. any claims, no but claims. I'm, I'm, no I'm, claims. I'm happy to, happy to share some stuff. Okay. Um, one of one of the testimonials that I really like is is from one of our largest distributors here in Houston. Her name's Gwen, and I did a video on you can find it, and 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 all of this is like she shares this with with uh, in that video. Um, she originally ordered the product for her dog. She has a Pekingese, and and she noticed such a profound difference in her dog that she was like, "Hey, I want I want to take that. Like that's my dog is now up and more active, and uh, this is something that I want to take." So she started started taking it. And in that video, she shares that it, three months in, if you had asked her, uh, what was the benefit that she got, she initially thought that she would say, well, I haven't really noticed anything. And then she stopped and started thinking about her life. And a couple of things that she noted was one, uh, she's working later, right? So she doesn't have a problem, you know, putting in an extra couple of hours. She's waking up earlier and she was never a morning person. And then this is what I call arguably the worst uh, uh, testimonial for a supplement ever. She cleaned her garage, right? <laughs> but, but if you have that that looming task, right? There's there's a reason it wasn't clean. Yeah. Maybe it's energy level. Maybe it's just whatever um, kind of a, a, some sort of mental hang up about what it means to have a clean garage, whatever it is, there's something that stopped you and, and to have consumed something and attribute uh, the, the getting over whatever is holding you back uh, to, to a particular supplement is, is a pretty impressive thing. Really fits in with our absolute most consistent testimonial. So our most consistent testimonial is people take it in the morning, they report mental focus and energy during the day, and then better sleep that night. And that is very interesting in a couple of ways. One, I've never heard of anything that gives you focus and energy and then also helps you sleep. There's also nothing that I'm aware of that you can take in the morning to improve your sleep, right? So we do know if you get exposure to the sun early in the morning, you like set your circadian clock and that can be, have a positive impact on your sleep. So, you know, go outside in the morning. Um, 
We also know that exercise, right? So if you exercise in the morning, that can have a positive impact on your sleep. Other than that, I'm not aware of anything. In fact, everything else that is purported to help your sleep is something you take right before your sleep. And there's some things out there that I like, like valerian. Uh, there, there's a sleepy time tea. You can find it at your grocery store. It's got a cute little teddy bear in, in, a P, in his PJs. And, and valerian, for me, worked, right? It would quiet my mind right? That's the thing that tends to keep you up. So it quiets your mind and allows you to go to sleep. Um, melatonin is another thing. You've got to be really careful with melatonin. It is actually a hormone. It needs to be dosed right and it needs to be timed right. The, one of the ways that it's described is it's the starting gun to tell your body it's time to go to sleep. So if you, if you fire off the starting gun at the wrong time, that can obviously be problematic. And if you take too much melatonin, imagine that starting gun going off at one o'clock in the morning and then two o'clock and, and it's saying, hey, body, prepare to go to sleep. It's not saying, body, you should be asleep now. Um, and so you can wake up really groggy if your dosing and timing is wrong with melatonin. And then the worst possible scenario, there's a book called Why We Sleep by Dr. Matthew Walker. 25 years of research about sleep, and I call it the Freddy Krueger of sleep books, uh, but it will scare you to sleep, not not scare you out of your sleep like Freddy Krueger did, because it's just 25 years of research showing what are the negative impacts of a lack of sleep. And in that book, he talks about the $2 billion sleep aid industry. And this is the prescription sleep aid industry. And, and what these drugs do, he describes, is throughout the day, our bodies build up a chemical called adenosine. And adenosine ca causes us to desire sleep. These prescription drugs will knock you out you'll wake up and it will have relaxed the chemical pressure of adenosine. So you feel like you don't desire sleep when you wake up, which can be very refreshing. But what's happened is the drugs have knocked you out and they haven't allowed you to get your REM or your in REM sleep, the two types of sleep that are paramount for healing and recovery. And so that's not good. And again, I draw the contrast. Ours is in the morning, focus and energy during the day, better sleep that night. And, and what's most on the market is, you know, take it right before you go to sleep. And in some cases, detrimentally impact your sleep. When I think about all the people I know that have sleep issues, there are so many people that take stuff and I'm, I, yep. I don't take anything. So, you know, I've tried melatonin and it worked really well when I needed it. But, um, you know, I don't have a problem going to sleep. Um, so that's, you know, I can't really speak to those people, but I, I just, I know that they struggle with it. And, uh, but the mental, uh, acuity and focus is really interesting to me because I've noticed, well, I'm 68, so I'm, I'm not the sharpest, uh, I've ever been, I'm, I'm, I'm not horribly declining in any way, but I, I do feel a slight difference in that. Right. That would interest me. Forgotten, just, forgotten words or like I, I'm, I'm having a harder, I'm 52 and I feel like there were, you know, the names of an actor or the names of a movie that would just pop into my head uh, long ago, you know, take a while to like scoop out of the recesses of my brain. But maybe that's just because there's more information in there. Like maybe you, who knows if that's if that's the artifact. Um, yeah. But but the mental focus and energy, uh, it really could be attributed to just the better sleep. Like that's that's an, an absolute possibility. Um, but sleep is something that a lot of people struggle with. I've, I've actually one of my videos it's incredibly heartwarming because this lady sharing her story um, and, and I can't talk I mean, she struggles with sleep, right? She's actually struggles with the, you know, kind of the classic disease related to sleep. I just don't want to talk about any particular disease because yeah. again, okay. I don't want any implications mm -hmm. uh, that we're making claims, but she, in that, in that, in that testimonial is, is moved to tears on two separate occasions. The first occasion was when she's just sharing that her, because now she's getting sleep, her significant other is like, sure, her energy's back. Her focus is back. Her significant other is getting to re-meet her, right? Because she had gotten lost in this last of sleep as, as a, a lack of sleep as a person. And then she just wraps it up to thank the company and just thinking the company has moved to tears again. I mean, it, it just makes me feel so amazing and, and, and want to work harder to like get on shows like yours and share this particular um, research with people. And if people think it makes Makes sense for them to try it, um, then great. Go out, go out and try it. 
Is there any um, blood work that you do on people that have been taking this for, for a while to see if those numbers uh, have changed in any way? We're actually working on um, on an experiment right now, and it's related to performance horses because uh, we've got, uh, you know, performance horses are very valuable. Owners want to, to, to get the best out of their uh, horses, and it's a, just a good, inexpensive way for us to get blood work. We're in the very early stages of that. Um, I think there, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, people ask like, okay, longevity, what might be the cause? What's the, what's, what's happening there? And I would say, uh, you know, scientists much smarter than me were ulti- are ultimately going to figure out the, the nuances of, of what's going on. But the current medical community believes that aging is related to oxidation and inflammation, right? Those are the two key pieces. Mm-hmm. And it's not surprising that our product is a great one, a great antioxidant. There's at least one study out there that shows it to be 172 times more powerful than vitamin C. And then when it comes to inflammation, you've got to be really careful because the FDA defines inflammation, equates inflammation with the disease. But what the FDA will allow us to say is that at least the inflammation related to exercise, we help with, right? Our product helps with that. What they won't let us say, whether it's true or not, is that it impacts any other kind of inflammation. And I like to share that our product fits in perfectly with anti-inflammatory diets, which are associated with blue zone, what is it so-called blue zone people. Those are people who have reduced incidences of stroke, reduced incidences of heart attack, and tend to live longer. And, you know, olive oil is one of the components that's typically consumed in those um, uh, uh, anti-inflammatory diets. Really interesting. I, that comes up a lot in this podcast. We talk about inflammation when we're, when I'm dealing with food and different things. And that is a, you know, most people do have a a degree of gut inflammation. Some of it is from diet and some of it's from environment. So that is a, that's a, a a concern for people to pay attention to that. Here's another question I have. Um, I just interviewed a uh, urologist who's a, uh, uh, a male sexual health uh, expert. And does this, have you gotten any testimonials about increased um, uh, libido, um, higher performance? Uh, I don't know even what higher performance means. <laughs> Just, you know, more, you, Zero uh, to 60. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, I, like, you know, I'm 60, but now I'm performing like I did when I was 25. I mean, is, have you, have you had any of that? I'm just curious. Cause it's yeah. just a recent podcast I did that interested me uh, in the realm of testosterone and those kinds of things. Yeah, so we, we absolutely have testimonials uh, along those lines. And then I, I like whenever we can to kind of pull out the potential for placebo effect. One of our pet testimonials is that the the dog was humping again. Right. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and right. And I feel like that's the, you know, that's the zero to 60 <laughs> and, and, and it removes the placebo effect, right? Like, you know, it, it is possible with humans to like say, Hey, this blue pill, which isn't Viagra, it's just a blue pill. And it can actually have a, an impact because if that's how our minds work, but that's not true with pets. Like he, he, the dog's not humping because like, Oh, I got my little dropper of, of, you know, my vital C this morning. And so I'm supposed to be more invigorated. Uh, no, it's just the dog's feeling that way. And, you know, it humps. So it, it's, uh, it's so we, yes, we do have some testimonials along those way. And again, if you look at our most consistent testimonial, mental focus and energy during the day, better sleep that night. If you're, I mean, sleep is one of the pivots. If you're, if you're talking about um, high grade athletes, which we all should kind of emulate to some degree, um, their focus is exercise, nutrition, and sleep. It's one of the three pillars of health. Again, exercise, nutrition, and sleep. If you're improving your sleep, then yeah, your, your, um, your vigor can, can, is going to be better. Like that's just what's going to happen. Can you ship me a case? I will, sh- I will absolutely. I, so what, 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 what I've done on a couple of the podcasts and this is, it's your show. So whatever, whatever you want, but mm-hmm. I can ship you some and we can schedule a follow-up in like six weeks and maybe kind of share with the audience what your experience good or neutral. Right. I love that. Yeah. I'm willing to try anything. That's, you know, that's, <laughs> I like that. Especially well, if it gets you humping again. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, here's the, here's the thing, you know, the, uh, I'm not sure I want that uh, only because 
that level of uh, humpiness is, is very distracting as a young man. It, it ruled my life so much of the time and who I talked to and how I acted. And I think it's some, in, in some degree, getting older has been um, a little bit of a, for lack of a better word, a relief. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> to the not balance. be so upset, obsessed with, yeah. with that. What do they say? Men have sexual thoughts every, what, five seconds or something like that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, that sounds about right. And I'm wondering, what are they doing the other four seconds? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think some women would argue that it's a complete void. And then every five seconds, there's some sort of sexual thought. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, when you, you ever, it's like, I, I remember just feeling like as a teenager, just like this moaning uh, dog. Yeah. Like, like <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get. I don't know if we're meant to live so long just because you know the height is so intense. It, it uh, you know from like thirteen to like the mid twenties, it's just a, a nonstop kind of a, a hormone intensive. festival. It really is, and yeah, and you're, and, you're, and I don't I don't know if women understand that uh, as much as guys do, but it's so it's so intense that you kind of are like. Can I, how am I going to get anything done? I mean, I did, obviously. Yeah. I went to school and I did all kinds of shit, but man. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it can be a, a distraction for sure. When but we'll get you switch. some anyway, and then you can you can share with your audience uh, how distracted you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm yeah. not, I'm not dead, but <laughs> yeah. Wow, I really appreciate this uh, conversation. How do people find this product or get more information? Uh, let's give some information about yeah. finding you and, and your company. So we made a URL just for your audience. So they can go to myvitalc.com forward slash exploding human, right? We took the V out of it, but forward slash exploding human. Oh, okay. When they land there, you can pick up individual products or you can get on subscription for like a 20 to 25% discount. You can cancel that at any time, literally any time. So go ahead and take care take advantage of that discount. Like we want you to enjoy that discount. We also made a coupon code called exploding human. That's the, the that's the coupon code exploding human. Uh, and that'll get you another, an, an, uh, an additional $15 off of your initial order. We do have uh, a face serum. Like I said, our, our capsules have been extremely popular. We sold out of them. We, are, we were actually out of them and, and took them off of our website for about four months. Um, so they're, they're back in stock. People are excited about that. Um, and, and we do have pet products. I don't know if you have, when I send something to you, if you've got a pet, I, I, we've got a dog and a cat version that I can, that I can send to you. Oh, wow. Well, no, I don't have any uh, pets for that. I, I have okay. a cat, but she's very wild and. I don't, she doesn't need anything. She needs to, calm down. <laughs> she doesn't need any more vigor. <laughs> no, no. She, she was, you know, slightly feral when we got her. She's tame enough to be like a, a, an okay pet, but she's, she's got some issues, <laughs> <laughs> mental health issues. <laughs> yeah. What about, okay, here's what I, you just said a serum. I'll send you some. So let, let's, let me talk about the face serum. It, it's kind of interesting. So um, if you got the correct picture, I never wanted to be a supplement guy. Like that was, that was not on my cards. I didn't want to go down that path, but you know, I'm trying to handle it uh, responsibly. And then one of my business partners was like, we need to make a face serum. And you can imagine how excited about making a face serum I was. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, from an entrepreneurial perspective, having a kind of different product base, that's at least a fundamentally good idea for the business, right? The reviews that we've gotten, and we've got, we had some influencers who were just like gaga over the product. They literally, we literally had to just keep sending it to them. And like, they, they, they were almost like uh, preppers, you know, for, for if, if Armageddon came, they wanted to make sure they had enough of our face serum. Like it, that was <laughs> really a fair description. Um, and so I've been blown away, you know, one blown away coming into the supplement market. And then all of these amazing results that people are reporting, uh, and then the amazing results from our from our face serum. So I'm I'm I, I will include a a sample for you of the face serum. Well, I can't wait to be handsome again. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I ever was. 
<laughs> well, Chris, this has been an absolute uh, pleasure to talk to you. What an interest. God, I get to meet the coolest people doing this thing. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> you well, probably well, never thank- thought you were cool, huh? But now yeah, you are. Yeah, like, you know, I, I think there is some point where you come to understand, and it's certainly not through high school and maybe not even through college, but that geeky is actually cool. Uh, you just have to, you know, run through some sort of gauntlet of, I don't know, uh, of embarrassing geekiness to to get to the cool to the cool phase i think that's true i love geeks i always have even when it wasn't cool to love geeks yeah i was you always to make a t-shirt i was geek before geek was cool or i was a nerd before being a nerd was cool yeah because you you just you know people that are uh you know what i like about it there's an earnestness to somebody that isn't participating in that sort of hip social hierarchy nonsense and they uh, genuinely don't give a shit I, th- yeah. I find that to be like really interesting thing they, they sometimes people don't they don't even notice it or if yeah. they do they go ah, i don't care about that and yeah like wow that is a strong person it's a liberating position for sure right because then you're you're not driven by um the opinions of others and that's a, yeah. that's a hard place to get to it re- yeah yeah and the, yeah it really is and it's um in the in the bottom line is most people don't give a shit about each other anyway and not that they don't care yeah. in a compassionate way but they don't most people are thinking about themselves 95 percent of the time anyway yes i think that's true yeah but i'll be thinking about you today <laughs> and and is that package arrived yet <laughs> the mailman's gonna go what how come you're out here every day wait, wait for me. <laughs> uh, yeah we'll we'll talk about uh the reactions i love this it's really that's really great i appreciate your generosity and uh well, everything that you're doing it's really awesome thank you so much thank you for for having me bob this is this has been a blast same here man same here have a wonderful day you too thank you so much for listening to the exploding human i have decided uh, with chris that i am going to be taking this my vital c and using the skincare product and we are going to do another episode so that'll be the following episode after this one so make sure you check that out the results of my experiment in trying this product and we'll see how that goes i also want to remind you to visit the website theexplodinghuman.com the YouTube channel, The Exploding Human with Bob Nickman, and The Exploding Human Facebook page. Once again, big thanks to Chris Burris, and remember to tune into the next episode also uh, when that comes out so you can find out what happened. Thank you. <laughs>